Welcome to Kwok Talk. I'm Crystal Kwok here on Tuesday morning at FinTech Hawaii. So I have this uh, topic on women. You always say, okay, always women's stuff, always women's stuff. But hey, this is a very, very in-depth woman's issue. Now, a lot of you women out there who are perhaps aging or have had some kind of a medical condition that's affected your overall body, health, energy, um, moisture. Ah, now you know where I'm going with this. Um, I'm going to go straight into the vagina and how it feels when it's aging. You know, we talk about women feeling bad about ourselves, but what about her? Have you ever asked her how she felt and how she could get a little picker upper? We're going to talk about that today. It's called vagina rejuvenation. Hallelujah! <laughs> yes! We have the wonderful Dr. Angela Pratt here with us today. Welcome, Dr. Pratt. Thank you so much, Crystal, for having me. It's a pleasure. Absolutely. Our pleasure to have you, the department chair of OBGYN at the uh, Kapiolani Medical Center. Mm -hmm. That's correct. And I believe you are the founder of this uh, Hawaii Beauty and Wellness Center. Yes, I am. So what is that all about? And tell me a little bit about why you decided to put this all together. Thank you. Well, Hawaii Beauty and Wellness Center was actually founded be because my patients were trying to, well, they were struggling with vaginal dryness and aging. Basically, I wanted to empower women with the knowledge that they need to make important decisions as they age. And for a lot of women, they're very embarrassed about that topic. Yes. They don't want to, you know, talk about it too much. They feel that it's um, something that's just not anything we can really do about it. Mm. And so even as a gynecologist and being as close to my patients as I am, um, a lot of them were just so re really reluctant to talk about it. And I think they just really didn't think that they had options. So Hawaii Beauty and Wellness was born out of the really the, the thought that it would be a safe place where they could go online in the quietness of their home and with their partners and look at things. And out of that, that concept, through Hawaii Beauty and Wellness. And, and we started about five years ago, myself and a, um, another OBGYN who was very well respected in the community. And we became a place where you could go and get a consultation and just find out right. what, what, what was out there. Um, the reason why I basically started it was for those reasons, but I have to say that it was a particular breast cancer survivor okay. that really sparked the, the renewal of vaginal tissue and vaginal health right. that led me to some of the technology that Hawaii Beauty and Wellness has to share and some of the technology that's new to the United States. And that's a very important aspect because a lot of people who think about uh, vaginal rejuvenation or anything to do with fixing it up down there, it, it might be something more kind of a plastic surgery yes. idea, yes. like, oh, I'm, I'm a little bit too loose from too much childbirth. Mm -hmm. But there's that huge serious issue that's right. with medical concerns. That's correct. Right. So I think that, that that um, there's a couple of issues that basically started, but it, it started out basically with a, a young female who was diagnosed with breast cancer, okay. 28 years old, a long patient of mine, long-term patient of mine, delivered her kids and she got a diagnosis of breast cancer. And as she took tamoxifen and chemotherapy and radiation and went mm. through her treatment, she became extremely dry in the vaginal area okay. and she couldn't have sexual right. relations with her partner. Okay. And she was, lamenting to me over the fact that, you know, she knew, she felt that there was nothing she could really do. So I just started looking around, like, what is it, how can I help her? And I was surprised to find out that there are CO2 lasers for this purpose that have been used widely in the United, um, in the UK, Australia, Italy, a CO2 laser that was developed in Germany and basically studied um, randomized control trials in, in Europe and have been used for over a decade. So when I started to look at it, mm -hmm. I happened to find out that it was seeking FDA approval in the United States. So it hadn't even come here yet? It hadn't even gotten here yet. And so I just happened to, to see that Dr. Mickey Karam, who's a very very well-respected pelvic reconstructive surgeon in the United okay. States was carrying this technology through FDA approval. So I called him and he said, Angela, you are not going to believe it. He's like, this is major technology for a medical condition right. of which women suffer. And we're going to get FDA, FDA approval in October of 2014. And I said, Dr. Kram, I, I got to have this for Hawaii. Why should Hawaii be last to get it? Right. So it's just <laughs> I was very fortunate. So in, in March of 2015, I got the Mona Lisa Touch. It was the first, first one in the state of Hawaii to get that. And over the course of a year, I did over 100, uh, 500 treatments. Oh, 500, 500 treatments, treatments in over a year. In a year. And in the following year, this past March, I got a huge 
and I didn't need this honor, but I got a huge appreciation honor for the Susan G. Coleman Organization for Breast Cancer Survivors wow. for helping women to reestablish intimacy. Right. And as you know, and your 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 as your um, your audience knows. You know, when you don't feel good about your vaginal health, yes, it affects your self-esteem, your self-confidence. Interesting, it, it, right? It, it's, it's part of it's, you. It's she part has of you. her voice. Your sexuality, if it is not it is not in the right place, it can affect your relationship with Absolutely. your partner. Then there's a breakdown in intimacy, especially for the breast cancer survivor yes, who are already, already yes. feeling. So, so that was a tremendously amazing for me to be able to to help in the one arena that I feel as a gynecologist I could really, right. really help. But not to get into too many technical medical terms, so the CO2 laser, how does that help and how invasive is it of a procedure? It's a good question. I was really surprised to find out that it's really a painless, non-surgical treatment that takes me five minutes to do. Five minutes. Five minutes. Non-surgical. Non-surgical. Non-invasive. Non-invasive. There is a slight discomfort at the opening of the vagina where most women are extremely dry anyway. That's the treatment, that area that is really affected. What is it basically doing? And so what it is is the CO2 laser actually is the same technology that we use to improve our face. You mean the Botox the type? C CO2 lasers oh, right. that CO2 you use a in. fractional CO2 laser to restore ah. uh, the facial tissues. Okay. So a brilliant scientist in Germany put it at the end of a vaginal probe. <laughs> oh, wonder who he was experimenting. Placed it, I mean, he should probably get the Nobel Prize. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder. But, um, but, it, um, yeah, but basically what it is, I place it in there for five minutes. Uh -huh. It's pretty comfortable, but they have to have three treatments to restore. Okay. And at first I thought, this is just like magic. It's like too easy, <laughs> like, right? How is this even possible? <laughs> um, but what, you know, through trials and through randomized control trials where we actually biopsy vaginal tissue and women went through this to make sure that this technology works, you see an improvement in the vaginal tissue. And what I mean by that is once you go through menopause or your, your skin starts to change and you lose estrogen and collagen, right. your collagen and elastin and proteoglycans and, and hyaluronic acid, all the things you need for beautiful, healthy skin, it starts to decline. So the laser stimulates those cells to produce more collagen and more elastin. And that's possible. You can that's still stimulate possible. more collagen. I that's thought right. with age, it's just kind of like No, a... those cells are still there. They're okay. sleepy. They're... So you have to re-stimulate them. And the protocol is basically, basically I'm following the Italian protocols, uh -huh. which is very well studied. So three treatments over six week course. Okay. And then you have to come back annually once a year though to restore those cells because they're going to go sleepy again. And do you have to supplement with hormone pills? No, and that's the beauty of it because breast cancer survivors, a lot of women, hormones is contraindicated. You know, I had, I, I thought originally that this interview was going to go into these graphic details of this horrendous procedure <laughs> where you have to reconstruct the vagina and, and because I thought vaginoplasty was that. It yes, well, so, so that is a, that is one piece of what women need. Women need, you know, it, and it's a bona fide medical condition. It's, it's, it's called genital urinary syndrome of menopause now. And what that means is that our vaginal tissue changes. It gets dry. We have difficulty with intercourse. We change the pH of the vagina when right. we age. Right. So we are more likely to get bladder infections, oh. yeast infections, other kinds of infections because our normal bacteria in the vagina can't thrive. Now that's one aspect of it that I'm so happy that came out of, 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 of the new technology. But since then, there's been other technology that has improved the health of women. And that's for the structures on the outside and the vaginal looseness. Okay. So the Mona Lisa is a CO2 laser which used to treat the inside of the vagina right. for women who are struggling with dryness. Okay. And that's an important aspect. But on top of that, now they've come out with, and just within the last six months, something okay. called Thermiva. Thermiva is a similar vaginal treatment, but it uses heat to improve collagen and elastin in much the same way that CO2 laser does. All right. But I can use the te this technology on the outside of the vagina, on the labial structures. I can focus it around the bladder and the opening of the urethra so I can help improve mild urinary stress incontinence, women who leak after they have right. their babies. That's quite and common. I can also take the integrity of the skin in the vagina and make it tighter with this particular technology. How does heat do that? Yeah. So heat does the same thing like the CO2 laser, but because I can treat it on the outside structures and focus the energy at the bladder and the urethra much more than I can the CO2 laser, because the laser is painful if you direct it on the outside 
side. Oh. Heat I can use on the outside, right. at the urethra, at the bladder, and structures where, uh, on structures where I wouldn't be able to use that before. So a patient who was more concerned with both the um, I don't know, I guess the beauty of the right. exterior right. in addition to certain Correct. dryness issues, you right. would use the Thermiva. That's right. So the beauty of it is that my goal is to really improve function. If we get a great cosmetic effect from that, right. that's terrific. Right. Some people want the cosmetic effect. That's what bothers them. And I feel like in this, you know, the 20th, first, 21st century, if, if something bothers you, you don't like your nose, you don't like right. your breasts, right. you don't, you know, then fine. You know, you can change it. That's can we a talk a little bit about decision. that? Because cosmetic, you know, this whole self-image criticism, um, some people take it too far and some people or, or look at it too closely. How much of it is important? I mean, have we ever asked our partners how much they actually look and, and see a difference and think that, you know, things That's should such, be constructed? I'm so glad you brought that up because, you know, I think most men, I think they really <laughs> don't <laughs> care. I mean, I mean, okay, now let's put this into perspective. Yeah. Viagra has been out on the market for 18 years, right? Right, right. So, with, you know, men are going out and they're they're taking care of whatever they should. They're taking testosterone and growth hormones. Yeah. And women are like, well, you know, that's all great, but <laughs> what, about, what us? about us? Yeah. And so there's been a movement towards empowering women. So now yeah. they're looking. Right. And maybe they don't feel that their partner really cares, but we care. Right. And we feel much more vivacious and sexy when we like the outer structures. Now, the thing I think for most women is there's some women who are born with their structures and right. they've never been really happy with it. Yeah. Maybe it's asymmetrical. Maybe it's where it, it hurts when they have intercourse okay. or they ride a bike or they're, I right. got a horseback rider. She's in a, she teaches horseback riding. Uh -huh. And so she came to me, well, I wouldn't be able to do CO2 laser or the heat, the thermal treatments, she needed a labioplasty. And right. she had a bona fide reason to get right, it. Right, right. But there are women who just, uh, from the get-go, they don't, they don't like their structures. But, but couple that with the female that has had vaginal birth and structures change. Well, she could feel her partner before she had her three kids, right. but guess what, she can't feel it now. Because yeah, I heard, you know, all these studies, people saying, oh, keep your kegels going, they don't work after a certain amount of time. You know, kegel exercise is a great supplement, but sometimes you need heat, sometimes you need a CO2 laser, and sometimes, quite frankly, you need surgery. And there's nothing wrong with that. I feel that there's nothing wrong with that. Sometimes you just, you need to get the best effect and to be able to have the intimate relationships that you want with your partner and to full, feel fulfilled again, you need a surgical approach. So what I really wanted to make sure happen is that you come to a place where you can evaluate all the things that bother you. You came to me and said, you know, you know, I had three kids. Right. Um, I don't like the color of my labia. I don't oh. like the shape of it. I want it instead of to look like Dumbo ears. I want it to look very nice. <laughs> like and Bambi. Like, you know, I want it to look like a, and, and we call this the Barbie doll. So I'm going to oh. say, I want to look like a Barbie. What does a Barbie and, vagina and look like? It was very smooth and perfect looking, clean, clean, and clean. And, you know, so, I mean, and that we have to be realistic about these things. But I do tell them, okay, this is what you need for function. This is how I'm going to improve the integrity of the vaginal tissue. This is how I'm going to be able to, so you can feel your partner. We're going to fix the mild urinary incontinence with this treatment modality. Right. But on top of that, you need a surgical approach. But so that's the way we can combine all of the treatments to enhance women's health and, and you know, make them uh, uh, happy with their bodies. Yeah, Why well, not? And, and that's really important. It's, it's how we feel about ourselves. We're going to take a quick break soon, but just a quick question. So would a person consider some some of these options only if they're engaging in having a, a sexual act active life? Actually, or not? That, that's a good question. Not Should we always. hold that? All hold right. That so, question, okay, good. That is so, a this very deals good with everyone out there. It's not just you having a happy partner, but a lot of other Correct. women and different ages and different backgrounds and reasons for it. So, we'll be back talking about vagina rejuvenation. <laughs> Hi, I'm Stephen Philip Katz. I'm a licensed marriage and family therapist here in Hawaii, and I'm the host of Shrink Wrap Hawaii, which is on Tuesdays at 3 o'clock. Have a great summit. Take care of your mental health. Hi, I'm Donna Blanchard. I'm the host of Center Stage, which is on Wednesdays at 2 o'clock here on Think Tech. 
On Center Stage, I talk with artists about not only what they do and how they do it, but the meat of the conversation for me is why they do it, why we go through this. A lot of us are not making our livings doing this, and a lot of us would do this with our last dying breath if we had that choice. And that's what I love to talk to people about. I hope you enjoy watching it, and I hope you get inspired because there's an artist inside you too. Join us on Center Stage at 2 o'clock on Wednesdays. Bye. Aloha. My name is Josh Green. I serve as Senator from the Big Island on the Kona side, and I'm also an emergency room physician. My program here on Think Tech is called Healthcare in Hawaii. I'll have guests that should be interesting to you twice a month. We'll talk about issues that range from mental health care to drug addiction to our health care system and any challenges that we face here in Hawaii. We hope you'll join us. Again, thanks for supporting Think Tech. But I do want to take you. Hello, welcome back to Quark Talk. Talking about vagina rejuvenation. So men, don't say, oh, it has been to do with me because if you have a partner who may be having some dry issues, well, it does, you know, this is a partnership. Um, and I'm learning from Dr. Pratt, very, very interesting um, and important information about the body and how you can improve your vaginal tissue by this new technology with the laser treatment. So um, Dr. Pratt, again, before we broke, and I was gonna almost forget this, but we were talking about people who are not engaged with sexual activity, but still may be suitable for some procedures. Correct. So that is a really good question because as we age, there are times where we feel like we're not going to be as intimate with our partners anymore. Right. But that doesn't negate the fact that our vaginal tissue is aging. So the oldest patient I treated is actually 83 years old. And she does and not she have a sex life. Is you know she says I I you know I I don't I miss that part. She says, but it's not part of what I, my husband and I engage in at this point. She said, but I want to do the laser treatment because when I use the restroom and I wipe, it's uncomfortable. Oh, it it feels like it's dry. It yeah. feels it feels. I think I have a bladder infection. I go to see you, my gynecologist, and I don't have a bladder infection. I actually have vaginal dryness, and I think that it's a urinary tract infection. Are they related? And dryness they, and the dryness kind of sometimes it feels like you have a UTI. You feel uncomfortable, that okay. itchy pressure, like I gotta go. Right. You get up at night to pee. So oh. there was two reasons why she did it. One is because she wanted her vaginal tissue to be healthy, and she right. told me, I wanted the pH balance the way that it was before because I don't want to smell like old lady smell. Aww. She's so cute. And, and also because she wanted to improve her, um, you know, getting up at night to pee, the okay. urinary incontinence All portion. Right. And getting up at night to pee definitely interferes with the quality of life. And right. actually for her, she, was, she got a great treatment effect and she doesn't get up at night to urinate. And she said, right there, that oh. improves my quality of life. And because she's sleeping better, mm -hmm. it's probably improving her skin and her self confidence and everything about yes. it. And you know, that's a quality of life issue that yes. has no price tag on you it. You know, it's funny, it's interesting. You don't really, we really underestimate the importance, like you said in the opening, mm -hmm. about how our well-being down there affects our entire life. Yes. And you know, it sucks to be dry. Mm -hmm. It really, I think a woman's worst fear is probably that because it represents so much. It does. And you know, the average age of menopause is 52. Right. But 50 is a new 30. Now. Exactly. We're, Janet we're Jackson's having a baby at 50. Okay. We're, we're living, living to be longer. We're, in fact, you know, my patients tell me, you know, intimate relations is better now in my 50s than it was when I was oh, 20. Right. You yeah, know, so there's a lot to look forward these to. These women and and you know, I I I applaud them and I and I really think that you're taking control of your your sexuality and your vaginal health and why shouldn't you? So what are some other areas that it can assist in in addition to what we were talking before about just, you know, cosmetic reasons or some health issues? Yes. So the one arena that I think, you know, women struggle on is there is, you know, sexual relations and the, the ability to achieve an orgasm. Okay. For some women, this is something that's never happened. Um, women come to me about that and say, you know, I've never been able to achieve that. And there's medical conditions right. that we, you know, as a gynecologist that I will help them to explore to figure out why is that. But oftentimes it's just the location of the of the erotic zone, which is what we call the G, G spot. spot. Right. And now we're kind of calling the O spot orgasmic. But you know, it's it, the same thing. It's though, the right? same, the same thing. It's the same thing. But you know, there's question in the literature. You know, as a as a as a 
as a physician studying medicine, does it even exist? And is it a myth? And, no, and is it, I was just going to ask you, where is there a specific placement, like two or three inches <laughs> up behind? From, Correct. Is that right? So it's, well, it's actually anterior, we call anterior, it's at the roof, and okay. it's, it's slightly to the left in 80% of women. Okay. So this is an area that um, what I find with doing vaginal treatments and vaginal rejuvenation, you're, you're increasing the integrity of the skin, you're bringing more collagen and elastin, but you're also bringing more blood supply to the area. Because right. basically what those treatments do is they trick the body into thinking there's been slight injury. And when that happens, the body responds by making more things like skin, like collagen and elastin and blood vessels. But it also recruits new nerve supply. Mm. So it enhances the sensitivity oh. of that area, which has been extremely exciting. Yeah. And now we're actually taking technology that we use in other arenas of medicine, something called um, um, uh, up is a basically platelet or uh, PRP. Okay. And we're injecting PRP, which is plasma from your own blood, into the G-spot area and it enhances sexual function. Wait, so you're so taking the blood from a different from, area? From, 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 I am actually doing a blood draw, taking the plasma from your own blood okay, and, and basically treating it and concentrating it and right. then placing it back in by injection in the area of the G-spot. That sounds painful. It really isn't. Is it just an insertion it's of just something? A, it's, it's just not really. It's a very fine needle that I use, and I'm putting your own plasma that has your own stem cells in it. That's crazy. And growth factors in it. How do you find a woman's G spot though? When you're well, not even that's that's the challenge. And actually, I work together with women to kind of find that place. Okay. And we figure out where it is, and then we enhance it. And it's been tremendous. It's been tremendously rewarding for me. I mean, you're not just an OBGYN, a cosmetic one, and a, a family one. You are. You know, and well, I'm, an I'm very, very well. I am therapist. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think you know my goal. You know, I'm born and raised in this community, and I really feel that. You know, I, I went to the commitment schools. I went away from my training, came back to the med school here, and I really feel that Hawaii has the most incredible women and we all strive to be the very best and I told myself that I would end. I would really want to be in women's health and I would try my best to make it as as best as I could for the women of this state and and really I, I really try to be as progressive as I can and be innovative and bring the latest technology and the O shot is is kind of been revamped from the G spot we used to call it. Okay, so it's called the O shot yeah, now. It's called the O shot now. And there's a lot of there's a lot of serums and you know all kinds of things happening in the skin realm. But in the in the area of sexual health, it's tremendous. And finally, because you know, it's time to level the playing field. Men are uh, doing all they can right. to improve it's time their to sexual enjoy ourselves. function. So I think it's timely for women. Do you do think it's it cultural? Uh, you know, um, being from Hawaii Obviously, you're surrounded by a community of women. Do you feel that there are particularly sensitive issues with women here and how we uh, approach our bodies as opposed to different regions? You would think that Hawaii would be someplace that would be very open. I mean, I know. Native Hawaiian community. But we also have a lot of conservative right. um, ethnicities that are not one that's going to talk about it. And, you know, I think that... that that women are finally realizing it's okay to talk about it. And that's that's why I told my patients, I'm so grateful that you bring it up because yes. You know, myself aging and being, you know, being in that arena too. I mean, I'm approaching approaching these things as well myself, and in the next few years, I'll be in that boat too. Yeah. So I wanna I wanna you know help patients to age gracefully but mostly to empower them to make this good, sound decisions about their health and to know what's out there. And okay, but I'm going to just challenge you a bit on this aging graceful ad, um, concept because some people might think, well, isn't it better to age gracefully naturally? Let your biological way just pave its path. Why do you want to use all this technology to kind of, you know, interfere? Yes, well, that's a very good question. But, you know, we don't need to, um, to do anything. We can age as a lot of my patients do well I don't need that I don't want that I don't think um, that's something that I want to do but 
you know, and that's their choice. Right. But what I try to do is tell them, okay, well, this is what's out there. This is scientifically proven. This is a innovative, new, non-surgical, non-hormonal, non-invasive way for you to improve your vaginal health. And if you are happy with where you are in life, and you and your partner are fine, well, that's 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 wonderful, and I'm happy. But if you're but not, if you're not, yes, these are the options under a safe umbrella where you can look and you know that it's going to be something that's non harm that's not harmful to you and that i can tell you works i am a busy gynecologist i have a very busy place. i know I deliver so lots hard of babies. to get you on our show <laughs> <laughs> i deliver lots of babies i do robotic surgery i'm the chair of the department i wear tons of hats but i can tell you this i am dedicated to making sure we have the latest, greatest technology for women in Hawaii. Well, that's really, really eye-opening because I didn't think that that was the case. And I'm so glad you did that. Um, but quickly, a couple of more informative questions. People are going to ask, how much do these procedures yes, cost? And true. how many? How often do you have to do it? Because you know, Great, it, does, yes. it doesn't create lubrication and moisture forever. Mm -hmm, that's you know. right. So you the, to restore the vaginal tissue, it does take three treatments right. to, to restore. And basically, you're talking about $2,500 to restore the tissue. Okay. Which to me is really not no. that much when you think about... It costs about more to do like your... Yeah, <laughs> it's really pretty reasonable. And then for um, for the annuals, you know, you have to come back once a year. So my patients try to align it with their annual exam, and it's a five hundred dollar treatment to restore to keep it to keep it that way. Now, if we're talking about surgical procedures such as labioplasty and you know in, and surgery, then yeah. of course that can be more. And you know, I mean. To me, I, I feel like these, all of these treatments, many of them should be covered by insurance, but they're not. Oh, and the Mona Lisa and one. the CO2 laser is not. And as much as I've argued the point that this is bona fide medical conditions right. of which women suffer, and it's, right. it's, it's debilitating like any other medical condition, Isn't it's that interesting? not going to get covered. For, and, and I hope that it is at some point. But... You know, because I think it was born out of the cosmetic industry, okay. there is a lot of reluctance wow. to that. So. Well, then there needs to be more people and a, a more of a voice to come out and, and help. Right. To yeah. And, you know, but I feel that I feel this way. I feel that if it's something that, you know, that you're unhappy with. And my patients tell me, are you kidding me? I spend $12,000 for my breast augmentation. I really am happy and it made me so much more confident. Right. And so to me, it's just a drop in the bucket because <laughs> I'm improving my, my vaginal health and it's not necessarily cosmetic. It's actually for my health. That's and right. for that reason, I think women are a lot um, less worried about the cost. But I, I mean, I, I recognize it's not. It's, it's, it's not covered and it, and it is a stretch. For and something. I think you brought up a very important aspect of women's health is learning or being able to do something for yourself and to be able to seek pleasure. And it's not a dirty thing. It's, it's for yourself. And that is, again, part of your well-being. And so it's really, really quite healthy. Um, Dr. Pratt, there's just a quite quick moment left. Would you like to uh, tell our audience a little bit about your center and sure. how they can seek sure, information? Sure, I'd be happy. So if you think that this is something that you might find helpful to you, you can go on the website. It's www.hawaiibeautyandwellness.com and you can look at all the treatments that are available to women and uh, it's all on there. There's instructional videos, there's informational, there's actually some very technical research-based um, information. Good. We should learn. And to, to learn about it. And if you never you never go there, that's okay too, but it's it's knowledge and you share it with your friends and people who are not so not so forward in talking about it. Um, but you know, come and see me and I'm happy to give you a consultation. We could talk about it and um, I, I love what I do and I'm just pleased to I can to tell you love what you do. I'm oh. very, very happy. We're <laughs> happy to have you share all that information with us. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Pat, for coming on. And again, contemplate your, your vaginal health and how that would make you feel as a whole person. And thank you for tuning in. All right, thank talk you. to you again. Bye.